So today I thought I would take a look at Kazen Linux. This is a, uh, it is a version of Linux it's a, that offers tooling to help you troubleshoot problems on other machines or, or other distros that are set up. Let's dive in a little bit. Kazen is a distribution for IT professionals, but of course, like all the things I cover here, it's not just for the corporate environment, it's also good for you at home. Uh, it is based on Debian testing, and you can consider it a rolling release, even though when you go out, you'll notice the downloads all have version numbers, and the most current download is 2.2 release candidate, I think it's either 2 or 3, that's out there right now. So they expect that, I think, according to what I read, a couple of weeks and then it'll be released. So IT professionals, who, who what, what does it do? So Kaze and Linux contains the tools that a system administrator, maybe a network administrator or a security engineer may need in order to manage a Linux server, maybe to help troubleshoot a problem, maybe to do some investigation on a potential breach or a problem with the network. Maybe there's, it's slow or it's not getting good connectivity or it's not stable in certain areas. So it also contains additional driver support. So unlike if you just took a, a standard install of Debian or Ubuntu or, or, or Linux Mint and installed it, you would only have the drivers that were included with the Linux kernel in that particular version that was being released with that particular version of the kernel. In this case, you have additional Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and sound drivers that are included with Kazen Linux to help you narrow down and get something up and running. And then you can use that to, to move that driver over to your system and hopefully get it to work there. So... Case in Linux is a whole system designed to fit into memory. So in other words, I can just put this on a USB stick if I want, go into uh, a particular machine, plug it in, and boot off of it, and then I can, I'll have access to the mounts that were being used by my system, even though maybe I was running Fedora or maybe I was running Arch. And I can use the tools that are inside of Kazen to diagnose what's going on. There are th four desktop environments that are available with Kazen Linux. There's Mate, there's KDE, there's XFCE, and there's LXQt. Those are the ones that are available. All of which, of course, are designed to be lightweight and fit into RAM. So, so the other thing that you will probably need, especially if you're in server environments that are locked down, as documentation. I won't be able to go out to the internet and just get that. Uh, I probably have some hoops and, or, and some approvals I would need to get from the server floor onto the internet. So typically, in most of the environments that I've worked in, that was not permitted. Uh, yeah, you did that outside and then you had to bring it through a process to uh, inject it into the production environment. So the documentation is included for both user and for each of the tools, the man pages, if you will, in an offline form so that you can bring them in on the USB stick and then you can use them from there. Now, the other thing is I keep saying USB stick, but there are certain server environments that don't allow those either. So you may have to put this on a CD or a DVD and you can, you could do that. The other thing is that you could download, when you get ready to install this, you could go and download the ISO image for Mate or KDE or XFCE or LXQ, whichever one you want. But then you're going to wait on a very slow mirror. All those mirrors that I saw were pretty slow. In fact, the uh, Mate version took about three hours to download. And so I don't recommend that you do that. I recommend just download the net installer. It's much smaller, doesn't take quite as long as all that. Uh, yeah, it was down in probably less than 15, 20 minutes. But, you know, um, even though that isn't, the net installer isn't going to help you very much during the install phase because then it's downloading packages from the mirrors, at least you're only downloading the packages that you want to install versus grabbing the entire ISO and downloading it. So, so it should speed things up for you overall. There are a number of ways to install this. First, you could just use it as a live environment, and there are a couple of choices there. 
the default is non-persist. So in other words, you don't have any ability to keep notes or create documentation while you're diagnosing a problem on the system. The second way is alive with persistence, and that allows you to persist data and store it so that you can take it with you and analyze it later. So if you're dumping logs, or if you're dumping, uh, you're doing traces on the network or watching firewall logs, you can do all of that. So, and then trap that to disk and then bring it back out and you can look at it later and analyze it more, uh, more in depth, right? So uh, the other way, of course, is then to just install onto the local file system and run it as a standard distribution. So let, let me go get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what the, if when you download the actual image of the, uh, of the desktop environment that you want. So you'll notice that you get live for French, because this is originated in France, by the way, uh, English, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, German. And then there's, you can install the rolling install, and then there's some utilities here. So let's go ahead and do the live English. Then you'll get some, uh, some, some other ones that if you're doing forensic analysis or fail safe, if you're needing persistence where you're keeping a, uh, you're recording and trying to save off your discovery of whatever the problem might be, or you're, you're tracing network logs and all that stuff. There's also an encrypted persistence, and then you can load to RAM, uh, which is the default, and also the same with forensic and all that. So let's go ahead and load it to RAM without persistence, of course, and just see how that works because this would be more of a typical use for this. Now, you will not find an installer on this live. Over here, you'll have your user applications divided out for you. So these are your normal type of things for creating graphics and accessing the internet, making documents, doing a little bit of programming, playing some media, and so forth. So, yeah. Uh, then you have the administrative tools, and this is the DevOps ones. You can see you have Ansible, AWS, Docker, Kubernetes, Lexi. We also have some, some tools for Puppet and Terraform, Azure Client, Builda, which is a mechanism to build the Open Container Initiative version of images. So Builda uh, goes hand in hand with Podman, uh, Builda is how you can create containers. Now, Podman is compatible with Docker. Also, you have your network, and there's just, there's, this is sort of like, um, this is sort of like the Kali uh, for system administrators. Because you have a lot of tools here. Then you have AppArmor, applications, backup, Databases, DHCP, uh, diagnosing DNS issues, firewalls. Uh, then you have Microsoft, you have remote administration, which would have uh, SSH. Parallel, I used to use Parallel quite a bit to, um, to update machines, but uh, ever since Ansible, that was pre-Ansible, but I haven't used it since going over to Ansible. So then you have your time and your LDAP and uh, CA key management and so forth. Then you have files. There's just so much stuff. Wow. IBM's JFS is on here. Riser. <laughs> wow. Riser 4 and Riser FS. The file system we thought would take over and it's still, they still work on it, but it's, the pace obviously is much slower. And then, now, this ZFS, I believe, is the Fuse version of ZFS. It's not the open ZFS version. So, I, personally, I won't find this very useful, but that's okay. I already have, I already have ZFS and, Z, and ZPool on, <laughs> on the open version. There's Ceph, all of the latest file systems that are around. So, these would be tools that would help you do things like 
diagnose problems or try to in, try to do data recovery. So it gives you a nice summary, and then I would assume it would start. You can drill down into it. Here's the modules that are currently installed. Five nineteen is currently what I'm booting as a kernel. My, my default locale during the install, the uh, my mounted file systems display resolution environment variables now one thing one thing I did notice earlier when I was messing with this this is supposed to be uh, ZSH I think this is bash it looks like bash yep so yeah otherwise you, it should look like that right so it's there and you can use it but it does not default to ZSH I don't know on Z shell so I'm not sure why they're not using Z shell or Z shell or ZSH. Uh, I'm not sure why they're not using it. And that wasn't all. We just we just cracked that far. We didn't really do much, did we? 519, we know that. How much disk? Looks like it's taking about 8.2 gig. Given the amount of tooling that this has, that's pretty impressive. 3,018 packages. Now I've been running all kinds of stuff, so 586 meg current in use. Is this Lion? So with that, I think um, I think what I will do is uh, wait for you guys to come back and say, okay, here's what we'd like you to do. Go do go go figure out this and show us. So yeah, in the meantime, you can go play with this too. The, the, the book that is out there for the user documentation is basically designed for people that are total beginners, that have no idea about how to troubleshoot a system. So it will go and basically take you through the steps step by step and help you understand not only the information you're looking at, but also how that information is applied to solving the problem that you may be having. So uh, nobody wants to become a system administrator or a security engineer or a network engineer. No, none of us want to do that. But there are times when we have our systems, we either have to turn to somebody or we got to figure it out ourselves. So in Linux, the tradition is, you, you do it yourself until you're stuck, and then you ask questions. Again, if you, let's say that you're on a distro like Fedora or, or Ubuntu, for example, this would help you to collect information that would be helpful to them, particularly if you're dealing with a bug. Uh, because the more information that you can give to them about it, the more it will help them figure out, can, well, can I reproduce it? Because that's usually the key and, and solving any kind of problem is that, can I reproduce this? And if I can, that would generally mean I have some kind of issue in the software. So yeah, hardware issues aren't generally reproducible unless, unless there's a, a mass defect in the manufacturing of a component, which has happened. Anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video on Kazen and Linux. Try it out. I think, I think you'll find that uh, and, and go check out their uh, manuals and the tools. And I think you'll find that this is the, this is the Cali for system admins, I think. Anyway, hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now.